make sure I record. All right, so we're going two-way tables and marginal distributions. Uh, we have learned some techniques for analyzing the distribution of a single categorical variable. What do we do when the data set involves two categorical variables? We begin by examining the counts or percents. in various categories for one of the variables. Here's an example to show what we mean. Okay, I'm gonna flip this page. <clears throat> so a survey of 4,826 randomly selected young adults aged 19 to 25 asked, what do you think the chances are that you will have much more than a middle-class income at age 30? The table uh, below shows the responses. Well, they split it up into male and female. So that's what they're talking about is that they have two categories now. So this is called a two-way table because it describes two categorical variables. So the first one is gender. So this, like if we split this in half, and the gender is split into male and female. And then opinion is your other one about becoming rich. Can you move your screen down a little bit? Yes, I'm so sorry. Thank I didn't you. look it up, so that's why I didn't see it there. Thank you. All right, opinion is the row variable because each row in the table describes young adults who held one of the five opinions about their chances. Because the opinions have a natural order from almost no chance to almost certain, <clears throat> the rows are also in this order. Gender is the column variable. The entries in the table are the counts of individuals. Sorry. In each opinion by gender class. What are your individuals? Or who are your individuals in this case? Um, the male and female participants. Close. What's the top part tell you? Oh, young adults. Say it again. Young adults. More specific? I know that sounds crazy, but I'm trying to try to adults by gender and chance of getting rich. Let's look up here. What did we survey? What were the individuals that we surveyed? The young Random. adults' opinions. Randomly, Randomly selected, selected young adults. All of this is your individuals. All of this is your individuals. So if I asked you what the individuals were in this, you would have to yell, I'm yell all of that. You'd have to write all of that out. 4826 randomly selected young adults age 19 to 25. Okay, just like we were specific about the cars, the students cars in the parking lot or whatever, be more specific. Okay, not that you said it wrong. It just has to be more specific. How can we best grasp the information contained in the two way table above? First, look at each variable separately. So this is important. Look at each variable separately. <clears throat> the distribution of categorical variables says how often each outcome occurred. The total column at the right of the table contains the total for each of the rows. All right. So if we look, all it's talking about is this is the total for each row. 
So if we add up 486 and 597, we get 1083. So don't be confused and don't let it get you. Like it's just telling you that this last column are the row totals, okay? These row totals give the distribution of opinions about becoming rich in the entire group of 4,826 young adults. One hundred and ninety four thought that they had almost no chance. Seven hundred and twelve thought they had some chance and so on and so forth. If the row and column totals are missing, the first thing to do in studying two way tables is to calculate them. So sometimes they give you the total and sometimes they don't. So they might just give you the chart without all that bold on our chart. And if they do, you wanna make sure that you calculate those totals is important. The distributions of opinion alone and gender alone are called marginal distributions. Because they appear at the right and bottom margins of the two way table. Okay, so a marginal distribution, you need to know this definition. So what should you study? Marginal distribution. Marginal distribution. Absolutely, you're gonna to have to know the difference between the marginal and conditional, okay? So know the difference and we're gonna talk about it and you're gonna to have to find those percentages at some point. We'll get there when we get an example, but I'm just telling you, forewarning you that you're gonna to have to know this, okay? Marginal distribution is the distribution of values of the variable among all individuals. And I know that probably doesn't make sense yet, but it will, okay? <clears throat> Percents are often more informative than counts. Okay, so if I told you that, uh, let's see, 630 students in this school liked cars. I don't know, I'm just making something up then you'll be like, okay, 630. But then if I told you that's three fourths of our population or 75%, that makes it seem like it's a little bit more, like it's more, more effective to say the percent, okay? So especially when we are comparing groups of different sizes. So when they do um, like the food drives here and they do classes that do the most, okay? So uh, the last time I think I did it, my fourth period was really tiny. And so it wasn't fair if like, I mean, I got like 40,000 cans or whatever, I didn't get that, but a class of 30 might have also got 40,000 cans. So they seem equal, but when you put can to individual ratio, so you get a percentage, what percent did we bring? It makes it a little bit different. So uh, comparing classes of different sizes probably should have went by percentages instead of the amount. So what was the like unit price? How much per individual? All right, we can display the marginal distribution of opinions in percents. by dividing each row total by the table total. So right there tells you your formula for this. Divide the row by the total and that's the marginal. For instance, the percent of the young adults who think that they're almost certain to be rich by age 30 is, so we're doing almost 30 because that's our row total over our table total. What's our almost 30 total? 
I'm sorry, not almost 30, almost certain total. Those of you that have your notes, look at that chart. What's your almost certain total? 1083. Yep. And then what's your table total? That's the one at the very, very bottom. Total, total. 4,826. Where did that number come from? It was all of the people combined. Yeah, remember we surveyed 4,826 individuals. So that's the number of individuals. Which gives you 0 0.224, which is 22.4%. So not very many when we put it in percent. So 1083 seems like a lot until you put it in percentages and then it doesn't seem like so much. It's only 22% of that total population that they did. Okay. Is everybody good? So this example, I'm gonna be rich. We're going to examine a marginal distribution and use the data in the two-way table to calculate the marginal distribution in percent of opinion. So we already did almost certain, but we have to do the other categories. And I like to do them in order. So our first row was almost no chance. So the way you're going to find this is the almost no total. over the table total. And again, the reason we're doing this and not male and female is because it tells you to do the distribution of opinions. So that's how you know which one to do. So almost no, what was that total? Somebody go back and check it out, help them out. 194. Perfect. What was my table total? 8826. 4826. Which gives you 4.0%. I'm going to try to show you this table again at the same time. All right. So here's our almost no and that total was 194, that's where that number's coming from, and your table total comes from right here, 4826, okay? So what, what's our next one gonna be? If we do some chance, but probably not, what are we dividing? Would you do the 712 by the 4,826? Okay. So that's where all these numbers are gonna come from so that you guys can see it. So some, is 712 over 4826, which gives us 14.8%. Then we have the 50-50, we know it's gonna be over the 4826, but what's the total for 50-50? 1,416. 14.16, which gives you a percent of 29.3. Then we have good, good was 1421 over the 4826, which gives us 29.4%. So real close to the 50-50. And then we have the almost certain, which we just did. So when we're doing like our homework, do you want us to just round to the tens place? They do it because it's like, uh, this is actually three decimal places. So does that make sense? So this, um, calculator. so when you do this, and you do your 712 divided by 4826, and I round three decimal places, it's 148, and then I change it to a percent. So that's why it's only that one decimal place. Yeah, that makes sense. Is everybody good? So remember I told you three decimal places is probably your 
your normal. And then we found this in the, the notes just a second ago, 1083, 4826 and it gave us 22.4. All right, any questions on that? Do I get where all those come from? So then the, the next part says make a graph to display the marginal distribution. What kind of graph are we gonna make? A bar graph. A bar graph. Uh-huh, and what do we need to remember to do? Label our axes. Label our axes. Oh, oopsies. Uh-huh, you're okay. I was gonna call make them all the same size. Yeah, make all your bars the same size. All of those are right, absolutely. That's what I'm looking for. So what label is this one gonna be? This uh, vertical axis. The percentage. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me get. All right, so our percentages go from 4% to 29.4%. So what's the highest number we can have? Well, I mean, you, you can have as high as you want to, but what should we have? 30. 30. 30. So I need to go from zero to 30. What's a good scale? Remember, we don't want it too big, but we don't want it too small. Five? Yes, and I did mine like this. I did 10, 20, and 30. But then I put my little lines in between to denote the five. So you don't even have to write all the numbers out. That's fine. Uh, I would go ahead and write the zero so it doesn't look crazy. You had some in your, your homework last night asking about what was wrong with the graph or whatever. And that's it. It didn't start with zero. And then we got to go for our categories. What's our first category that was in our chart? Almost no. Yeah, almost no. Y'all are doing great. Don't don't lose confidence, okay? You're doing great. Our percentage was 4.0, so it's gonna go close to the five, but not quite there. And again, like Haley said, you want to try to keep the bars the same. If, I'm not gonna be super picky, but that's why I said graph paper will help you do that. So it, it'll look perfect on graph paper. The next one is some, and what was some? 14.8%. Uh -huh, so that's almost to 15. We're gonna try to make it the same width. Remember, they don't touch each other. I'm putting them far apart just so you can see the space. If you wanna put them a little closer together, that's fine. Then we have 50-50. Okay, I have a question. Question away. Okay, so when you're doing like the bar graph, and if, even if you're doing it like out of 100, do you need to go to 100 or do you just need to go to your highest value? I just go to my highest value. Okay, because I went to 100 and I'm like, well, this zero seems like too much to do. Okay, so what's going to happen if I make it to 100? Are we going to see this, still see like the same shape? Yeah. No. So. Yeah, no, yeah, you will. You will see the same exact shape. And we'll get to that soon where we look at those graphs differently. You should see the same shape. Like if, the, if it's a graph like this, but you only go to 30, the next time when you go to 100, it'll still be the same. It'll just be a little bit shorter. So you can still compare them the same. Does that make sense? So either way is correct though. Yeah, yeah you can't mess it up. Going all the way to 100 or your highest. Yeah, you can't mess it up. Okay, okay. Yep. So that's, that's the things that we have to check. So I would check, that's the... That's the bad part about grading for this course is I could have, you know, 21 different graphs in here. They won't all look the same unless I make your axes the same for all of you. So no big deal. 50-50 uh, was at 29.3, so that's right at 30. Right at 30. Then we had good and almost certain. I'll go ahead and write both of those. Good was just a little bit higher than that, so we want to make it just a little bit higher. Yeah, pretty blind. And almost certain was 22.4. Now, eventually, I'll show you how to do these on uh, your calculator. But again, what would happen is if I changed it to 100, this same like rounded shape that we have right here will still be the same. It'll still be the same. 
All right, so each marginal distribution, oh, I didn't label this. You'll get counted off for that. So make sure you have your label. Each marginal distribution from a two-way table is a distribution for a single categorical variable. As we saw earlier, we can use a bar graph. Somebody has their mic on. Can we mute, please? Thank you. All right, a bar graph, or we could use a pie chart. What's a pie chart good for? Showing percentages. Percentages, absolutely. To display such a distribution. Could we use a pie chart on this one? Yes. Is everybody okay with that? Most of your, uh, <clears throat> or your percents will add close to 100, okay? So you could use that, sorry. Do you guys have all that? Everybody good, I'm gonna move it on. So then we're gonna check our understanding. So a random sample of 415 children aged 9 to 17 from the United Kingdom and the United States who completed a census at school survey in a recent year was selected. Tell me who my individuals are. 415 children aged 9 to 17 from the United Kingdom and United States. Keep going. Who completed a census at school survey in the recent year. Yes. Perfect. That, that whole thing has to be in your individual. Okay. What's wrong with this table? It doesn't have a total. Okay, so can we do that? I'm gonna do a couple of them with you and then I'll fill them in for you. 54 plus 45? 99. Uh, 52 plus 44? 96. 30 plus 37? 67. 20 plus 23? 43. And then 66 plus 44 is 110. Your column totals are 200 and 215, which gives you a table total of the 415 children that we surveyed. Okay, so make sure you do those. If you wanna write total up here and total over here, you can. Okay. Use the two-way table to calculate the marginal distribution in percents of superpower preferences. Remember, marginal is over the total, but we're doing superpower preferences. So what's our first superpower? Flying. So we're going to do the total fly over our total table. Okay. And I'm not going to write that every time. I just want you to remember it. Okay, total fly over total table. So what is that, that fraction that I'm gonna write? And I have about 10 minutes. If we lose it, we'll come back in. 96 over 415. Good. Uh, not 96, but? 99. 99. 99. Sorry, that's what I get for listening to y'all. No, I'm just kidding. Um, flying, you just looked at freeze time. So 99 over 415, which gives you 23.9%. The next one is freeze. What's your total for freeze? 96. 96 over 415, which gives you 23.1. Your invisibility would be 67 over 415, which gives you 16.1. Can you even move your paper down a little bit? Yep. Always tell me. Thank you all. Super strength, 43 over 415, which is 10.4. And telepathy, which is 110 over 415, which gives you 26.5. Do I need to make the histogram next or the marginal distribution? Bar graph. Do y'all need that? Yeah, can we do it? Jeez, Rachel. No, no. No, we can do it. Girl, you know we can do it.
Is everybody good with the percents? Yes, we're good. Yeah. Tell me if you're not. Yeah. What's the what first was the percent for telepathy? What? What was the percent for telepathy? 26.5. 26.5? Yep. All right, so what's going to go on our vertical axis? The total percentage. Percent, yep. And you can just write the percent, and that's fine. What's going to go on the bottom? The superpower. 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 What do we need to go from percentages? What's our highest one? 26.5. So what can we go to? 30. We can do it the same exact way that we just did the other one. And then our first one was fly, which was 23.9. Our next one was freeze, which was 23.1. So it just needs to be a little bit shorter than this one. Then you had invisibility, and it was 16.1, so a little more than 15. And then you had super strength, which was 10.4, so a little higher than 10. And then you had telepathy, which was 26.5, and it'll be your highest one. Sorry, I didn't space that very good. And that's it. All right, so it, I got about six minutes. It's probably going to kick me out. Um, so let me do this. Let me go ahead and go out now, and then I will come back in. I'll get an extra couple of minutes if that's good. So I can stop this here. This is a good place to stop this recording so it's not in the middle, and then come right back, okay? I think if you stay in, you'll be fine. I just have to go out. Okay, so stop recording.